Hello, I am Russ Tate from UC San Diego, working with Mike Stepp, Zach Tatlock, and Soren Lerner. I will be presenting a new approach to optimization based on equalities. In traditional optimization, we take a program and we apply a sequence of optimizations so it's transformed that program, making it incrementally better and better. The problem is that we can take those same optimizations and apply them in a different order, each order producing a different optimized result. Ideally, we will look at all these different results and choose from them the best program. However, there are an exponential number of orderings, and the destructive style of traditional optimization limits us to searching one path at a time. Unfortunately, there is no ordering which produces the optimal result for all programs. These factors combine to produce the well-known phase ordering problem. There is, in fact, another problem with traditional optimization. Profitability heuristics are limited to being local. Each optimization has two jobs. First, it must figure out if the transformation can be applied. Second, it must decide whether this transformation would actually improve the program. For this, it uses a profitability heuristic. Unfortunately, in traditional optimization, these profitability heuristics are limited to being local. Local in the sense that they cannot take into account the effect of future optimizations. In light of these problems, we have taken another perspective on optimization. What we realize is that each optimization is telling us that the original and transformed programs are all equivalent. Optimization, then, is in general an attempt to explore this huge space of equivalent programs, trying to find the optimal version. Traditional optimization explores a single path through this space, the end of the path being the transformed result. We've designed a new approach based on equalities which allows us to efficiently explore an entire region of this space. Our optimized result is the best program in this region. Our approach takes a program and first converts it into an intermediate representation we have designed specifically for equality reasoning called a program expression graph. I will present more about pegs later in the presentation after I'm done with the overview. Now that we have a suitable representation, we can proceed to our equality saturation stage. Equality saturation explores the space of equivalent programs by repeatedly inferring equivalence information. With each equivalence we add to the IR, we simultaneously explore an exponential number of paths through the space of equivalent programs. It is impossible to explore the entire space, so we explore up to some cutoff depth. After exploring equivalent programs, we need to determine which of the versions we found is the best. For this, we use our global profitability heuristic, which analyzes the space we explored and selects what it thinks is the best version. Once we have a selection, we convert our selected peg back into a control flow graph. This control flow graph is the optimized result of our process. Our approach has many benefits. It mitigates the phase ordering problem since its non-instructive style allows us to efficiently explore an exponential number of orderings. We can use a global rather than local profitability heuristic, allowing us to explore our options first and then decide which is best. The same technique we use for performing optimization can also be used to perform translation validation by verifying the equivalence of input and output results of other optimizers. Now that we've seen an overview of our approach, let's look at an example of performing optimization using our approach. Here we have a simple program, which sums the first few multiples of four. We first need to convert this program into a new representation, the challenge lying in representing the loops. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to describe all peg operators, so we will focus on the expression 4 times i inside the loop. This translates into the multiply node and the corresponding peg, representing the sequence of values 4 times i takes as the loop progresses. In particular, the theta node represents the sequence of values the variable i takes as the loop progresses, by combining the initialization of 0 and the fact that i is incremented by 1 in each iteration of the loop. Pegs have a few key properties which make them an essential component of our approach. They are a complete representation of a program, allowing us to discard the original control flow graph and freely manipulate the program in its peg form. All operators, even those representing loops, are referentially transparent, so they are as easy to reason about as mathematical operators. 
There are no intermediate variables, which allows simple local reasoning to produce complex branch and even loop optimizations, which we will demonstrate shortly. Now that we have a peg, we can discard the original program, since pegs are a complete representation, and move on to equality saturation. Our version of traditional optimization is equality analyses. They have the simple job of identifying equalities within the IR. They can operate at the peg node level, allowing them to reason about the equivalence of program components in the same way traditional optimizations reason about the equivalence of entire programs. They often take the form of equality axioms, since multiplication by four is equivalent to left shift by two. In fact, this axiom can apply to this peg sub expression. Applying the equality analysis produces an equality annotation edge, signifying that the multiplication by four produces the same value as the left shifting by two. And so we have begun equality inference. In traditional optimization, the destructive nature of program transformation would limit us to exploring the left shift by two path after applying this optimization. However, we simply added information non-destructively, allowing us to continue exploring in the opposite direction. In particular, we can distribute the multiply by four through our theta operator. Notice that this produces a theta node not in terms of itself. Our peg operators are context insensitive and can be manipulated as freely as arithmetic operators. Next, we can distribute the multiply by four through addition. Distributivity actually produces a less efficient program since it changes one multiply into two. However, we are not limiting ourselves to this path just recognizing it as an option which may be worth exploring. In this case, the new multiply by four is exactly the same expression as this old multiply by four. Referential transparency of pegs allows us to more efficiently reuse the old node rather than recreate a redundant node. Lastly, we apply zero and identity axioms to simplify these multiplications. What we produced here is an epeg, the E standing for equivalence, since we have grouped the peg nodes into equivalence classes. An epeg simultaneously represents an exponential number of equivalent versions of the original program by the various ways we can select peg nodes from each equivalence class. The question is, which of these selections produces the best program? For this, we use a global probability heuristic. This heuristic analyzes the epeg and selects from each equivalence class what it thinks is the best node to use. Once we have a selection, we can simplify into a normal peg. This is our optimized peg. Lastly, we convert this optimized peg back into a control flow graph. The theta node represents the sequence of values the variable j takes as the loop progresses by combining the initialization of zero and the increment by four. Now that we have our optimized result, let's look at where we came from. Here is our original program. We have changed four times i into j and accommodated for this change by changing our increment by one to increment by four. Although I did not show this in the example, a few more axiom applications would also transform our bound from 10 to 40. What we have done here is actually the well-known optimization, loop induction variable strength reduction. We accomplished this using very simple rules without worrying about what order we apply them or without even worrying about whether they should be applied. This pattern of advanced optimizations emerging from simple rules is actually quite common with our approach, so we call them emergent optimizations. Loop induction variable strength reduction is only one of many. We never had to explicitly code these optimizations, so for no additional effort, we produced many advanced classical optimizations, as well as many non-classical optimizations not in traditional compilers. A major challenge of our approach lies in, 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 in its implementation which are overview stage by stage. Unfortunately, I do not have time to present our conversion algorithms, but they can be found in our technical report. In order to model languages with updatable heaps such as Java, we make the heap an explicit value and use linear types to constrain its use. For equality saturation, we use Tarjan's union find algorithm to track the equivalence classes in the EPEG. We use the read pattern matching algorithm from the AI community to incrementally process the EPEG for peg nodes significant to the various equality analyses. We use a variety of equality analyses, such as axioms about peg operators, which can all be proven using the, the denotational semantics in our paper, axioms for, for language-specific items such as integers, arrays, invocation, and heaps, 
And we can easily extend our framework with the main subject axioms, such as vector algebra, immutability information, and implicit contracts. We'll implement a global probability heuristic using a suitable Yon solver, a variant on integer linear programming. We assign a cost to each operation in the EPEG, and we impose constraints so that the peg selected is well formed. Then we ask the suitable Yon solver to minimize the cost of the peg it selects. We then take that selected peg and convert it back into a control flow graph to produce our optimized program. We have implemented this approach as a Java bytecode optimizer called PEGI, which optimizes each method separately. In our experiments, we observe the interesting phenomena of emergent optimizations. These produce optimizations we never had to explicitly code and sometimes would never even thought of. Using domain specific analyses, emergent optimizations were able to produce a 7% runtime improvement for a Java ray tracer on top of the optimizations produced by Javac and the JIT. We compiled the spec JVM and on average found more than 10 to 30 equivalent versions of each method without ever using more than 200 megabytes of memory. Here we present our average compilation time for each stage. Notice that most stages were quite fast, except for a global profitability heuristic. This is not surprising since suitable in programming is NP complete. We have yet to focus our effort on this stage, so we believe there is room for drastic improvement and already have some ideas for making this stage faster. As I said earlier, our approach also applies to translation validation using the following architecture. We take two programs, the input and output of some optimizer, and convert them both to pegs. We then send both of these pegs together to equality saturation and check to see if we found them to be equivalent. Using this approach, we were able to validate 98% of the spec JVM methods optimized by SOOT, another Java bytecode optimizer. Within the remaining 2%, we actually found a bug in SOOT's optimizations involving incorrect loop invariant code motion. In conclusion, we have seen that the traditional optimization strategy of making optimization decisions early on with only local information is limiting. In contrast, our approach makes decisions later in the optimization process using global information. We have found this strategy to be quite powerful. Our non destructive techniques are able to simultaneously explore an exponential number of paths through the space of equivalent programs. This vast exploration produced the interesting effect of emergent optimizations, discovering optimizations we would never explicitly coded. Our approach is also extensible, since equality analyses cooperate automatically without the designer having to worry about how one analysis may impede another. It is also easy to add domain-specific axioms, since equality information can be conveyed without worrying about implementation or representation. Our approach is also a general mechanism with the same techniques applying to both optimization and translation validation. This suggests that there are more avenues for applications we have yet to find, and we plan to explore these in future research.